Hello all. In this video, we will see how uh, we can do the control execution. Uh, I mean, the how do we control the execution flow using the if statement? In Java, both uh, uh, if and else statement are used to control the execution flow. So before we should proceed with uh, if and else, uh, first we will uh, uh, talk about um, simple statement and uh, compound statement. Uh, in Java, each statement is uh, separated by a semicolon. So Java executes the statement one by one. In the left side picture, you are seeing six statements. So each statement is uh, separated by a semicolon and all six are uh, standalone statement or we can call it as a simple statement. When execution occurs, it first executes the statement one, then the control moves to statement two, then three and so on. And at the last it will execute the statement six. So the flow is sequential like First statement one, two, three, four, five, and six. Likewise, uh, it executes the statements. We can make a simple statement as a compound statement by placing a curly braces. In the left side's picture, uh, if there is no curly braces, then we will be seeing a six simple statement. Since we placed here two pair of curly braces, then we are ending up with uh, two compound statement. These compound statements are useful if you want to group uh, related uh, information. Usually, whenever we talk about uh, if condition, then we are grouping a statement. Say, for example, uh, if some variable equal to zero, then based on that uh, decision, we may group a statement and execute that. So when that particular condition evaluates to true, then we perform a group of op action. So that time we will place the statement in a group by using these uh, curly braces. So in Java, we call this as a compound statement. Um, if we declare a variable inside this uh, compound statement, the variable is visible only to that statement. Suppose if we declare a variable x in compound statement 1 in the left side picture, that x may not be visible in compound statement 2. That means, once again, I can declare a variable x in uh, compound statement 2. All right. We will see this uh, with an uh, example. Okay, here is our uh, first example. Um, in this example, uh, we have three variables. Uh, the first variable is integer x, which is assigned to 15. Then we are printing that variable. So it is inside the public static void main. After that, if you see, we have two compound statement. Each compound statement is combination of uh, two single simple statement. So let's take the first component statement in that we declared int y equal to 5 then we are printing it and if you look at the second component statement once again we are declaring int y if and we are initializing it to 15. So there are two declaration here and the compiler won't give any error. So if you are seeing here in the problems uh, tab, you are not seeing any issue. What happens if I declare a int x equal to 5 here? It will give you an error stating x is already defined. Why? Because here x equal to 15 is in the outer block and uh, that is visible inside this uh, inner block or inside the compound statement here. 
to see here the error is a duplicate local variable and the problem step we are not seeing it or because we haven't uh, saved that once I save it this will show there is an error duplicate local variable x all right what if you see here we are not getting any trouble with uh, variable y so we are uh, declaring variable y here as well so um, this is the this is the use of a compound statement let us execute and see how it works so if you see the first 15 is for x and next it prints a value of y which is 5 then in the third block we have 15 that get printed here 15 if I try to declare uh, or if I try to access that variable y here we will get error say for example let me let me save this if you see y cannot be resolved to a variable if I double click it it will show here so this block says I don't know what is y where it is or because it is not declared here on this scope and it is declared in the previous compound statement so the current compound statement doesn't know what is y so so this is the use of a compound statement usually people will group similar statement inside this curly braces so these compound statements are useful when you are, you are forming a condition so now we have the knowledge of what is um, single statement and what is a compound statement so you can form a if condition uh, by placing the keyword if then within the parentheses we can form our condition the condition can be formed using the conditional operator like uh, greater than less than greater than or equal to less than or equal to and one or more condition can be combined using the logical operators like double ampersand or pipe symbol yeah so in the left side picture I was saying uh, for statement the statement in red shows that when the condition evaluates to true the first statement get executed so we have shown that in uh, red color so whether condition evaluates to true or not the statement 2 3 4 is always executed which is shown in blue in the left side picture so based on the condition the statement 1 is either executed or get skipped okay we will see that with an example Okay, here is our uh, second example. Um, so in this example, if you see, we declared a variable called uh, the x and we also initialized it to 5. And then the next statement, we are forming a condition. Here we are making use of the statement if. So this is the, condi this is the conditional statement. The condition is x greater than or equal to 0. So, when this condition goes true, then the statement, the simple statement next to the if condition that get executed. So, in that we are printing positive. That means the condition what we are checking is, uh, we are making sure that the x is greater than 0 or it is 0. So, that's the operator there, greater than or equal to. So when x is actually 0 or more than 0 then the condition returns a true that means it executes the statement which is coming next so 
the system dot out dot print line positive that will get executed and we will see that in the output and the statement I mean the last statement which prints by it will always get executed so whether the condition evaluates to true or false the last statement always get uh, executed so here in this example x equal to 5 so when we come here the value in x is 5 so the condition evaluates to true why because 5 is greater than 0 then we will see it is positive oh, that's the result you are seeing here it's positive and you are always seeing by or because this will always get executed let's change this value to minus 5 so now this will make the condition go false so when it goes false it will not execute this statement and we will be seeing only by here so that's the use of uh, if conditional statement so we can make a decision to decide whether we need to execute this particular statement or not so that decision is made based on a condition and that condition is here so to use that condition we are using the keyword if so that's the if statement here all right let's execute this uh, if you see that positive is not coming because the condition is false so it is printing only by all right the example 2 which it describes us that how we can form a simple statement as part of a if condition now we will see how one can execute a multiple statement when the if condition evaluates to true so in this example if you see in the left side picture when condition evaluates to true we execute only one statement now let's go with the compound statement we already know what is compound statement so here if we see if condition evaluates to true it executes a single statement but that's the compound statement so when we say that's a compound statement then it has three statement inside it so this way when condition evaluates to true we execute multiple simple statements or one single compound statement so compound statements are executed uh, based on the i mean compound statements are formed based using the curly braces so on the left side picture if you see the red line or the statement marks as red line is either executed or skipped and that is decided based on the condition so when the condition evaluates to true statement one two three get executed when condition evaluates to false the statement one two three get skipped altogether so the statement four five six always get executed so you can see how the flow occurs the red arrow shows when condition evaluates to true the statements are executed one by one first it executes the compound statement which is formed based on three simple statement so those statement get executed one two three then it executes the remaining statement which is outside the if condition so it goes in a sequential order four five six so when condition evaluates to true all six statement get executed now when condition evaluates to false it skips that compound statement that means we the execution skips statement one two three and it executes the very first statement as statement 4 then executes 5 after that 6 all right we will see this with a, an example now okay here is our uh, example if you see the variable declaration is same as previous example and 
the condition also same we are checking x is greater than or equal to 0 that means we are checking whether the given number is positive or not but this time if you see we opened uh, curly braces and we placed the three statement uh, inside it so these three statements together forms a group and we call that as a compound statement one so the compound statement one is uh, executed when condition evaluates to true after that it always executes the print line by all right now we will execute this if you see the execution flow occurs like this the first int x equal to 5 then it comes to the next statement if the if statement doesn't terminate with a um, semicolon it's a, an exception um, so after that inside the statement we have three simple statements so it will get executed in the order first it executes the statement one then statement two then statement three so all these three statement together forms a compound statement after that it executes the uh, the final statement after the if block so now if I place minus one here and execute it the condition evaluates to false and all three statement get skipped and we will get by so that's the only statement executed uh, skipped so this way you can when you place the statement inside a curly braces or uh, if you use a compound statement then you can uh, either execute or skip multiple statement one at a time so so far we have seen if statement um, suppose if you want to alternate between two statement so far we have seen uh, an example in which a particular statement get executed or skipped and once if we come out of the if block the remaining statement always get executed so here if you look at the left side of the example uh, we are having if as well as else so here when the condition evaluates to true the compound statements shown in blue get executed and the condition evaluates to false whatever is coming inside the else portion that will get executed here in this picture uh, we are seeing two compound statement so let us call blue as compound statement one red as compound statement two so compound statement one executes or compound statement two executes either one of these two statement execute not both so when that situation arises we can use if else statement all right now let us uh, see this uh, with an example once again so when you have two set of statement and if you want to make sure either one of those set get executed not both then the best option is if else okay we will see example for now here in this example uh, let's have an initial value of 5 then the condition is the same this time we are using the if else statement with uh, two compound statement so when condition evaluates to true we will print positive then we will print the next to statement that means uh, the console output window will show us a positive second statement third statement and when condition evaluates to false we will see negative fifth statement sixth statement so this way by making use of if else 
we will either execute the first group or the first compound statement or second compound statement so here we are seeing two compound statement since we placed a if else struct uh, construct here there is only one group always get executed and one will always get skipped so which one will get executed and which one will get skipped is decided based on the condition statement which we place inside the if construct all right let us execute this at percent the value in x is 5 it is positive so the first compound statement get executed so if you see positive second statement third statement then the control jumps to the last line by so it skips negative fifth statement sixth statement now if i reverse it at now the condition evaluates to false and if i execute it it execute it skips the first compound statement and starts with the second one so in the console window it is printing negative fifth sixth then it is printing by this statement by is outside the if construct that means it is not affected by the condition so it will always get executed also the statement before the if which is a variable initialization as well as declaration that will also get executed always all right now let's go to the last part of this uh, video so we can use nested if else construct also so far we have seen what is a simple statement that means each line of statement separated by a semicolon is a simple statement when we place multiple simple statements inside a curly process then that forms a compound statement after that we saw how we form a if statement so if construct can use simple statement as well as compound statement so it's up to the programmer to decide whether uh, they need to use a simple statement or a compound statement right we saw if and else both the constructor uh, i mean the both the construct now we will see what is a nested if and else so as part of uh, compound statement if we place one more if inside the uh, if condition or inside the else condition then we are seeing this as a nested if else construct so since we already know what is if else let us see this directly through an example okay here is our uh, final example if you see here uh, we declare a variable and we kept it as negative initially then we are checking if uh, x is positive that means if, if x greater than or equal to 0 which means positive then first we print the number is uh, positive or not i mean the since we know that it is definitely positive then uh, uh, that's why we are printing a positive as the first part of statement then we are checking whether the particular number is divisible by 5 or not so that requires one more if statement that comes inside the if construct let us say uh, our friend asks to check whether a number is a positive or negative and when the number is positive then you check whether it is divisible by 5 or not so this is the statement he gave to you in that case one will write a code like this so first uh, we will check whether the number is uh, positive 
so for that we need a condition x greater than or equal to 0 so once condition evaluates to true then we know that the number is positive that's why we first printed okay the number is positive but to make second decision whether it is divisible by 5 or not we need one more if construct so that if construct is appearing as a next statement if x modulus 5 so that's the modulus operator that will give the reminder uh, <coughs> so in this case x is a 17 so let's say x is positive 17 so now when the modulus operator operates on that uh, number it gives a remainder as a 2 so the, we are checking whether that expression is equivalent to 0 that's a comparison operator the double equal to is a comparison operator so x percentage 5 is 2 2 equal to 0 that is the condition we are checking so that is not true that's false so we will go to the else portion and we will print not divisible by 5 so if you see whether divisible by 5 or not the decision making comes only when the number is positive so this is how uh, we automatically end up in writing the nested if condition so we know that we already in a if condition that checks for whether the number is a positive or negative but when the number is positive then we come to our next decision making which is whether the number is divisible by 5 or not so if the number is divisible by 5 then we print a corresponding statement now if you look at the else portion it doesn't need uh, nested if well, because your friend asked you this once again i'll repeat your friend asked you you check whether a number is positive or negative if it is positive you also tell me whether it is divisible by five or not so this is the statement he gave you he doesn't talk about negative uh, when it is negative he don't want you to do any uh, other additional operation so in the else portion what we do we just put uh, the number is negative then we put some sample print statement uh, yeah. that's all uh, in this code let's execute uh, first this number is positive but it is not divisible by 5 we will see the output so it says positive not divisible by 5 and it says by Why? because else portion won't get executed since the topmost condition evaluates to uh, true yeah so it doesn't end up with the else portion now let us make this divisible by 5 let's uh, say 20 if I execute now once again we enter inside and we print the statement positive after that the second condition comes into picture that performs the modulus operation and then it decides it is divisible by 5 and prints the weighting divisible by 5 after that it skips the else portion in the nested if then the statement execution comes to else for else and else will not get executed so it comes to the uh, outermost if block so when it comes out of the outermost uh, if block it executes by okay let's explain this once again we know that statements gets executed one by one so now when the program flow occurs inside the main the very first statement is x equal to 20 so it executes that the next statement is an if condition so it evaluates x greater than or equal to 0 yes x greater than or equal to 0 it is true since the condition evaluates to true we get inside the if, struct, uh, if construct so here it executes the very first statement inside that uh, if construct so it prints the state it prints uh, positive in the console output window then execution moves to next line the next line is x percentage 5 equal to 0 the modulus operation tells us 
there is no remainder that means it returns zero zero double equal to zero it's a comparison that comparison evaluates to true now the execution goes to true portion of this if condition so it prints indivisible by five it it skips the else portion then it knows that it should come out of the nested if okay it comes to the uh, outermost if condition and it recognize there is no more statement to execute it in the if condition outermost if condition then the execution knows that it should not execute the outermost else part also then the control execution stays at the last line and it executes that by so this is how we are getting positive then divisible by 5 then system dot out dot print rule by right so this is how the flow occurs here we have seen how the nested if construct works so that's all in this uh, video thanks for uh, watching if you want to get a notification when a new video get posted subscribe the button below this video see you all in next video bye bye